today's uh, webinar of the Management Association of the Philippines on pushing for livestock industry development, which is a joint project of the MAP Agribusiness Committee and the MAP Trade Investment and Tourism Committee under the MAP CEO Academy. The MAP CEO Academy serves as the umbrella brand for MAP activities that address the continuing education of MAP members and other management practitioners and the sharing of the latest technologies and information on management and leadership. My name is Oscar Torralba. I am one of the moderators for today's webinar. I served this year as the chair of the MAP Agribusiness Committee. May I call on my co-moderator, Mr. Charlie Villasenor, who is the chair of the MAP Trade Investments and Tourism Committee. Thank you very much, Oscar. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, uh, I know that uh, some of you may just uh, come from uh, some lunch, so kindly uh, settle down comfortably. Uh, we will now begin uh, our program. But before that, um, may I humbly request the governor in charge of both the uh, MAP, Agribusiness Committee, and the MAP, Trade, Investments, and Tourism Committee, who is also the chair of Brain Trust, uh, Dr. Shell Habito, uh, to deliver his welcome remarks. Shell? Thank you. Thank you very much and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here with you and uh, I do the honors of welcoming you to this uh, webinar, the MAP CEO Academy webinar on pushing for livestock industry development. Certainly one of the most important industries in this country because it feeds us with the most important nutrient uh, protein. So on behalf of uh, MAP President Fred Pasquale, welcome to this webinar, which is already mentioned is a joint project of the MAP Agribusiness Committee and the MAP Trade Investment and Tourism Committee. This webinar is actually part of a series of learning programs offered by the MAP CEO Academy for our members' professional development. MAP is committed to promoting management excellence for nation building. A discussion on pushing for livestock industry development certainly will provide an essential perspective as we, uh, we pursue our theme for this year, push for change towards a better future for all in 2022. The livestock sector is a pillar of the global food system and a contributor to poverty reduction, food security, and agricultural development. According to the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, or FAO, livestock contributes 40% of the global value of agricultural output and supports the livelihoods and food and nutrition security of almost 1.3 billion people. At the same time, there's wide scope to improve livestock sector practices so that they are more sustainable, more equitable, and pose less risk to animal and human health. FAO also says that livestock play a major role in sustainable food systems. For example, manure is a critical source of natural fertilizer and so much needed right now. And as we know, chemical fertilizer prices have really gone through the roof. While livestock used as draft animals can also help boost productivity in regions where mechanization is not as accessible. Livestock are important assets for vulnerable communities. Globally, around 500 million pastoralists rely on livestock herding for food, income, and as a store of wealth, collateral or safety net in times of need. Locally, livestock production systems have the potential to contribute to the preservation of biodiversity and to carbon sequestration in soils and biomass. In harsh environments such as mountains and drylands, livestock is often the only way to sustainably convert natural resources into food, fiber, and work power for local communities. FAO further added that increasing incomes, changing diets, and population growth have led to increased demand and made the livestock sector one of the fastest growing agricultural subsectors in middle and low income countries. This represents a major opportunity for smallholders, agribusiness, 
and job creators throughout the livestock value chain. But if not properly managed, this growth risks accentuating sustainability issues that span equity, environmental impacts, and public health. How then can we develop further I love I love livestock industry? How can the private sector in particular help? This webinar was organized precisely to generate answers to those questions. So we should therefore thank our invited speakers, Director Raquel Echage, who takes charge of investments on this industry at the Board of Investments, and Mr. Danny Fausto, certainly one of the most prominent figures in the Philippine livestock industry today, for sharing their time and expertise with us today. Of course, I also thank uh, Oscar Toralba and Charlie Villasenor for successfully putting together this webinar. Oscar, as has already been said, is the chair of the MAP Agribusiness Committee, while Charlie is the chair of the MAP Trade, Investments, and Tourism Committee. So today's policy webinar is in line with the MAP Board of Governors' first priority thrust on policy reform for economic dynamism. Uh, the other two priority thrusts for 2022, by the way, are human development and well-being and shared prosperity and sustainability. Now, for regular updates on the MAP activities, please monitor all the MAP website, uh, the, the map.org.ph website in particular, and various communication channels such as email, Viber, our electronic newsletter, the MAP memo, the MAP Facebook page, the MAP YouTube channel, and the MAP LinkedIn account. As you can see, MAP has made sure we are very much present online in social media. So again, welcome and thank you one and all for joining this webinar. And I look forward to a very stimulating discussion ahead. Keep well, everyone. Maraming salamat. You're, you're muted, Oscar, if you're the one speaking. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Gobshell. And uh, uh, there's a uh, brief teaser uh, that I submitted. And uh, Arnold, could you please show this teaser about the uh, goat farm that I visited last week? So on the left side, uh, I'm feeding uh, this uh, mother goat and I baptize him uh, Donald Trump. And uh, I'm that uh, guy uh, on the right side uh, before entering the, uh, the house of this goat. Next slide, please. This uh, goat farm is located about 20 minutes uh, northwest of San Fernando City. And this is uh, the farm. And on the right side, they actually have a house. There is a goat house where uh, the uh, young goat uh, called kids. Kids. These are the kids warming up. Sun sunlight in the morning. Next. This farm has about 350 heads. And uh, after uh, uh, preliminary introduction, for us, we were served, of course, uh, Chabon uh, culinary. And uh, the, uh, the owner of the farm is, is uh, Mr. Randy Valerio and uh, his uncle, Mr. Primo Valerio, who is a successful property developer in uh, San Fernando, Pampanga. That's me and uh, my wife. No? Next slide, please. So, uh, this farm started with uh, 40 heads, courtesy of uh, PL480. And Randy used to work as welder, AGN assigned in uh, Caledonia. And he managed to save some money. And with the help of his uncle, he has now 350 heads. So that is an example of uh, the prospect of uh, livestock. Thank you, Arnold. Thank you. And uh, now I think we can proceed to the next uh, part of our uh, webinar. 
So take it away, Prof. Matteo. Okay, let me just quickly share my slides in here. Thank you and good afternoon, everyone. So I'm going to talk about an update on the DOS TP card Agri Aqua Innovation Challenge. So I'm Matthew Escobedo. I'm the one running this in partnership with the Department of Science and Technology and the Management Association of the Philippines and the Asian Institute of Management. So it is the government, industry, and academe working together to empower Filipinos to be part of the solutions in the problems that we have in the Agri Aqua sector. So what is this challenge all about? This is a team-based innovation competition where we get to highlight the country's technology-based solutions to challenges in agriculture and aquaculture. And we have two categories. We have startups or early stage startups. And then we have uh, uh, students from, from, from college students to, to, to graduate school students. And we're trying to sort of help them in their innovation journey from inciting, ideating up to the implementation stage. And at the same time, we're trying to create a channel, a process that's sort of going to support and scale agriculture and aquaculture Filipino startups so that we'll have more many from these uh, groups coming up with solutions that eventually is going to help us Filipinos. And also this is an avenue, that's why I'm also here, uh, to provide with the government, the academe to work together and, 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 and spur our innovation uh, ecosystem. So we've started at one last uh, January. This is the first run that we have. Now we're in April. Uh, we have about almost 400, 386 applications. And now we've sort of whittled that one, filtered. Now we have 40. In terms of from where the applicants are coming from, uh, from the application stage, uh, except for the Karaga region, we have <clears throat> applications coming from uh, all the other regions. Uh, in terms of where they're most are from. So we have from Calabarzon and from uh, NCR. And also in terms of those 40, most would also be from Calabarzon and, and NCR. Where are they now? So in terms of how the program is des uh, uh, designed, so there's going to be a stages, milestones in their journey. Uh, so almost 400 came in. Now we, they are at the market validation stage. So we're going to take a look at when we envision this one, we're going to highlight the market relevance, the product creativity and the business viability. And those, those will be the stages at which we're going to sort of uh, filter them along their, their journey. So now there are 40 out of the uh, almost 400 that are in the, in the working on trying to validate uh, their market, okay? And that's what were sort of uh, help needed later on by May 23, 24, they're going to have the first feedback session. So we would be inviting you to make sure, I mean, we have some, we have people from the industry to get to validate or even provide suggestions, comments in terms of the relevance of their market, but also in terms of their creativity of their product as well as the viability of their business. So where in the value chain are they working on in terms of the problem? So across the value chain from inputs, production, processing, marketing and trade, retail and consumption, many though are focused on production, uh, and the processing, marketing and trade, and then uh, retail and consumption. In terms of the technologies, what kind of technologies that the uh, technological sector that they're focusing on. So we have from machinery and operating systems, we have test kits, we have production techniques, we have farm inputs. Now many though, especially for the students, uh, they have certain apps on smart farming and, and internet of things. What are they bringing to the table? So we highlight in terms of uh, competitive advantage, the intellectual property. So we have patents, we have trademarks, we have copyrights, we have utility models, industrial designs that are being brought uh, to bear uh, to help them solve the problems in the agri and aqua uh, sector. Uh, since when, for the startups, uh, this is the data that we asked them, how old is their startup? It's nice to know that we're able to nudge a couple, 31 of them to sort of enlist at SEC to formalize their journey of the 31, 
nine of those, okay, nine of those who were selected to be part of the journey. So we were sort of a, a catalyst to formalize their uh, innovation journey, to, formalize, to formally uh, uh, register themselves at SEC uh, to work on this. Okay. Uh, here are some examples. So I'm going to show something uh, for, for, the, for the startup and then for the, for the uh, student team. Hello, I'm Lester. By the way, can you hear the sound? I'm playing a video. The founding farmer and chief executive yes, we can. officer of Farmbox. Yes, okay. I want you to meet Danny Levy, a mother and a farmer. She's been farming for almost 40 years. All her life, she's supporting her family and her dream fixed her licking roof. But at the end of a five-month farming, she'll just end up with only 8,000 pesos. How come that the provider of food at our table just earned so little? Because Nana Lady needs to pay off her loan and interest, suffer a decrease in productivity, and absorb price losses from middlemen. But how can she support her family and also fix her roof with only 2,000 pesos a month until the next harvest? The story of Nani Ledi is the same story of 11.1 million Filipino farmers in the poverty line. And because of this, we've built Farmbox. Farmbox is a social enterprise that helps uplift the lives of Philippines' local farmers. Our mission is to give our farmers a better agri-community. We have four main boxes to fund high-value crops and hydroponic farmers, poultry and livestock growers. The boxes will give them access to funding, quality farming essentials, they have access to training and agricultural solutions, and a marketplace to sell their produce. Our platform caters customers from inputs to outputs, the working millennials for the sponsorship of boxes, the MSMEs and other farmers for the agri-produce and products. For sponsoring a farmer, there will be a net profit share at the end of each farming cycle. And we do a percentage commission on every sale of the products of MSMEs and non-partner farmers. Our advantage is that we are creating a community. Farming needs a multidisciplinary approach. And like a chain, its strength is equivalent to its weakest link. We want to serve our farmers end-to-end -end from inputs to outputs. As of today, we are helping 122 farmers and distributed around 1.6 million pesos of agricultural services and products. Our revenue is at 2.3 million, and we are targeting to achieve 6.1 in 2022. Driven by the global goals 2, 8, and 17, we have seen an improvement in agricultural productivity, income, skills, and economic growth of our farmers. And we can create so much more for our food providers. That is why we want to build the hub, a place for upscaling, upskilling, and, a, and where farmers can do their research and testing. With our team with various experiences and certifications in agriculture, business, and technology, we can create more successful stories like the story of Nanay Ledi. Nanay Ledi fixed her roof in, and is now enjoying her coffee when it rains. She is now earning 10,000 pesos a month. With our farmers' hard work and our help, no sector will be left behind. We can create more beautiful and successful stories by helping our local farmers one box at a time. Thank you. Also, we have another category for student teams. So we'd like to uh, knock on universities. There's so much knowledge in there. Translate that knowledge into actual products and services that's going to benefit our, our people and our industry. So. Agriculture industry is not just a business, it is a source of livelihood for many of our Early diagnostics is seen as one of the most efficient ways in preventing disease outbreaks and further losses in it. Diagnostic kits in the country are imported, proven to be expensive, time-consuming, and inaccurate. We at the UCT EBI team for results. With accurate results.
It will jumpstart a series of diagnostic kit we are innovating for the shrimp industry, which can also be used by other sectors. Let's save the shrimps. Let us save lives. <laughs> Jump WSSV Detection Kit. Rapid, precise, Filipino. Okay, so those are just examples of what you get to see. Uh, they're going to make a pitch and there'll be breakout ses sessions where you can ask more questions, probe, uh, offer comments, suggestions, what have you, for these different uh, startups and student teams. So that would be 5 o'clock to 8.30 p.m., May 23 for the student teams and May 24 for, for startups over Zoom. So we highly invite okay, MAP members, especially those in the agri-aqua sector, to be part of that one so that we get to help these student teams and uh, early stage startups in their innovation journey. So we would welcome feedback on the market relevance, on their product creativity, as well as the viability of their business. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much, um, Oscar, and very insightful uh, presentation, Matthew. Um, just, uh, just some reminders uh, before we start the presentations of our speakers. As number one, as participants for this webinar, your audio and video are automatically off. Um, number two, you may submit your questions through the Q&A button that you see on your screen. With the assistance of our MAP secretariat, we as the moderators here will read the questions on your behalf. You will also be able to see the speakers and other program participants, but you will not be able to view the other attendees. Um, as we introduce uh, the speakers, uh, in line with the MAP policy and in the interest of time, we will dispense with the lengthy introduction of our speakers. Their profiles will just be flashed on the screen as we do now. I would like to remind our speakers that you are given up to 15 minutes each for your presentations. May I now have the pleasure to call on our first speaker. Please welcome the Director for Resource Base Industry Service of the Board of Investment, Director Raquel B. Chage. Welcome, Paul, and over to you now. Um, your sound, please, ma'am. Uh, kindly unmute. Uh, we don't hear you, Paul. Sorry oh. about it, but earlier my microphone is working. I don't know why <laughs> it's not working. It's okay. <laughs> It takes a little while. Yes, we can hear you yes. well. Okay, thank you. Thank you very you. much. Thank no you. No problem. Okay, so thank you for inviting the BOI. Thank you, uh, Management Association of the Philippines, headed by the chair, uh, Mr. Oscar Toralba. Uh, this is an opportunity for BOI to really promote uh, our initiatives, particularly uh, registering projects for uh, livestock uh, investment so uh, i'll be quick on this uh second slide please yeah okay uh this is just a brief in uh industry information about livestock that uh wherein we gather data from the relevant agency and the philippine uh statistical authority here uh livestock is actually contributing more than 179 billion uh, pesos in 2021, which is equivalent to 3.43 billion US dollars. Uh, it accounts for 10% of the uh, country's agri, fishery, and forestry sector in terms of the uh, gross value added. And uh, it remained resilient in 2021 with a positive uh, GVA growth of uh, uh, in the last quarter of 2021, uh, I think it's 8.96. Uh, 
And uh, okay, so next slide, please. Okay, these are just uh, the top uh, livestock producing regions uh, based on the 2020 information or data gathered from the PSA. Uh, Carabao has uh, in in Western Visayas they, they contributed a 14% of the total production for Carabao, uh, followed by Davao region, Sok Sargent, Eastern Visayas, and Cagayan Valley. For cattle, the top producer uh, was Northern Mindanao, and then Calabar Zone. Um, Ilocos Region, Western Visayas, and Central Visayas. For hogs, uh, the top producer was Calabar Zone, Central Luzon, Northern Mindanao, Western Visayas, and Central Visayas. And for goat, 13% uh, more uh, is contributed by uh, Central Visayas, followed by Ilocos Region, Central Luzon, Northern Mindanao, and Western Visayas. So next slide, please. Okay. Uh, I, I think uh, this will be presented later by one of our speakers. So uh, I'll just show uh, a bit of this that uh, the African swine flu uh, actually uh, affected our livestock industry. And uh, per PSA report, uh, the country lost about 3 million of the local hogs inventory from 2019 to January 2021. And uh, there's a projection by the Department of Agriculture that the pork supply in 2022 will have an estimated gap of more than 100,000, uh, 120,000 metric tons. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, now uh, this is the Philippine hog supply chain based on uh, the initiatives of the BUI. Uh, you'll wonder why it's only hogs that we will be featuring right now. Uh, it is because that hog, uh, we registered a lot of hog uh, investments or projects in the BUI. We seldom register the other uh, products of livestock like cattle, goat, and carabao. So uh, the, the intervention were... Uh, given to the hog industry and i'll discuss also how projects on the livestock industry could be provided with incentives under the create act or the corporate uh, recovery and tax incentive for enterprises act uh, based on the current uh, 2020 investment priorities plan of the boi next slide please Okay, so I'll start with here is a, a is a simple simple uh, representation for the value chain of hogs, and actually uh, it will all, it is also uh, applicable to other uh, livestock products. Uh, we just highlighted here I mentioned earlier for hogs because we have uh, interventions for the hog industry. For example, uh, BOI initiated a regulators forum. Uh, uh, the, the purpose for uh, the, this uh, forum is to uh, provide uh, streamlining or improvement of the processes by regulators such as uh, the NMIS or the National Meat Inspection uh, Service of the DA and uh, the Food and Drugs Administration uh, because they, uh, 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 in terms of uh, permits, they provide or they, they are the agency that uh, uh, releases uh, regulations or permits uh, before a livestock industry or livestock investor could uh, start operation. So uh, this is about ease of doing business. And we, uh, particularly for FDA, they already had uh, initiated reforms in their uh, processes so this is a a, a continuing uh, innovation from these various agencies uh, in 2020 also the boi launched uh, the philippine cold chain industry roadmap uh, uh, notice that these are shaded in yellow here in the uh, in the diagram so we launched the Philippine Cold Chain Industry Roadmap and we created the National Committee, Cold Chain Committee, headed by the BOI, the DA, and uh, the Cold Chain Association of the Philippines. The intention here is to uh, educate the, uh, the, the educate everybody, 
particularly the Filipinos, can using or utilizing cold chain and, uh, of course, pushing for or uh, promoting uh, food safety in our food. And uh, we also uh, want to uh, increase investments in the cold chain services, including uh, logistics services. So this is a multi-sectoral uh, committee that we formed in 2021. And also, uh, we have been uh, supporting the industry for uh, the roadmap for the processed meat industry, but uh, it has not yet been uh, formally uh, submitted to the Department of Trade uh, or, and the BOI for our uh, implementation and support. We also conducted and uh, supported uh, the NMIS in its information session on its online application for the accreditation. Also, uh, last year in 2021, we conducted the feasibility study on the, uh, the establishment of the MDM in the Philippines, but however, the result uh, was a negative one because it will not be a viable uh, venture uh, at the set, uh, at the current setup uh, in the country, so uh, here I'll use all, uh, I also use this uh, value chain uh, diagram in explaining which of these areas could qualify for registration or for investments in the in the under the 2020 investment priorities plan. So um, we uh, we can uh, we can qualify an integrated production and processing uh, activity uh, and uh, we can also qualify registration of each of this activity for example uh, for raising of hogs or livestock uh, we can register projects for those that will raise any of the livestock products uh, if if hogs only or goat or cattle or all of them, uh, we can qualify them for registration and provide incentives. I later uh, uh, discuss about the types of incentives that are available. We can also register uh, pro producers of feeds uh, that will be used uh, by this uh, by, by the li livestock industry. We can also uh, register uh, qualify for registration those that will uh, produce uh, vaccines. Uh, and medicines for uh, for for uh, for uh, veterinary use, and also we can uh, qualify for registration uh, breeders. Sometimes uh, projects would only be uh, covering uh, raising and uh, subcontracting. We can also qualify those subcontractor subcontractors that will supply bigger companies. Uh, like uh, as, as contract breeders or contract growers. So uh, there's no uh, hurdle or there's no uh, ceiling for investment costs. However, uh, any co type of uh, investment could uh, be qualified. The, the CREATE law only provided for the location of the project uh, for purposes of granting the incentives and the industry tier. Later, I will discuss about in the industry tier. So here, uh, the corporate recovery and tax incentives for enterprises already amended the provisions of incentives under the Omnibus Investments Code. It covers all the investment promotion agencies. So all IPAs will have only one uh, incentives uh, package for all projects. And uh, however, IPAs uh, will maintain its own mandate uh, under uh, CREATE and the BOI is tasked to formulate the strategic investment priority plan that will replace the investment priority plan. With the absence of the SIPP, we are still using the 2020 IPP as the transitional SIPP. So both a new and expansion projects may qualify for the incentives and qualification uh, would be based on the industry tier and the location and IPAs uh, would be uh, tasked to uh, uh, approve uh, for incentives purposes projects that are 1 billion uh, below and uh, for projects that uh, cover uh, more than 1 billion pesos, it will be uh, elevated to the fiscal incentives review board. So these are the tiers 
types of tiers in uh, under the SIPP. The 2020 uh, IPP is uh, covered by Tier 1. So all those activities under the 2020 IPP will be uh, registered based on Tier 1 incentives. For the Tier 2 and 3, this will be covered by the, uh, reform, the, form, the newly formulated SIPP, uh, which was submitted to the President. So uh, next slide, please. Okay, these are now the incentives under the CREATE Act. Uh, we uh, there are, there are four to seven years uh, available income tax holiday, uh, depending on the location of the project and the tier. For export oriented uh, enterprises, uh, the incentives after the ITAs would be five percent special corporate income tax based on the gross income earned uh, for ten years, or uh, enhanced deductions for domestic oriented. It will only be income tax holiday and uh, enhanced deductions. Enhanced deductions are enumerated on the right side of the slide. Both the export-oriented and domestic-oriented companies would be uh, enjoying duty exemption on imported uh, capital equipment, imported raw materials, and spare parts or accessories. And export-oriented companies would also be uh, exempted by from VAT on importation and VAT zero rating on local purchases. So these are the available enhanced deduction on the right side of the uh, slide. So uh, if you if the activity would be a power intensive activity, then uh, you uh, you may want to enjoy the fifty percent additional deduction on power expense if it's. Uh, basically an R&D activity and uh, therefore uh, the enhanced deduction on 100% additional deduction would be appropriate or uh, feasible for the project, including training expense uh, in, in, in view of the R&D activity. And of course, there would be deduction on domestic input expense. Next slide, please. This is the matrix of uh, the types of incentives under the CREATE. So the farther you go from NCR, the farther away from NCR, the higher the number of years of, of tax exemption. Uh, for export-oriented companies or projects, if you are in NCR, locating in NCR, under a Tier 1 activity, then uh, you can enjoy four years of income tax holiday and 10 years of uh, enhanced deduction or the 5% uh, special corporate income tax. So for all other areas, it would be six years of income tax holiday and similarly 10 years of uh, enhanced deduction and special uh, corporate tax. For domestic market enterprises, uh, you still you also have, uh, a, in the, if you're locating in NCR, you, you can be entitled to the four years uh, income tax holiday but uh, the available incentive after ITH would be the five years enhanced deductions. No, uh, 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 the ten percent, uh, the five percent SCIT is not available for domestic-oriented projects. So for those that will locate in metropolitan areas uh, or areas contiguous to ad or adjacent adjacent to NCR. Uh, the years of incent of tax exemption is five years and five years of enhanced deduction after the IT8s. And for those locating in other areas outside NCR and outside metropolitan areas, uh, income tax holiday would be uh, for six years and enhanced deduction would be fi for five years. So um, uh, notice that for tiers two and tiers three, uh, for both export and mark and, and domestic market oriented, they have both uh, the, they have the same number, uh, similar number of years, seventeen uh, ITAs and uh, enhanced deductions for export market oriented, and uh, twelve years uh, of ITAs and I. ED or enhanced deduction for domestic oriented activities. For those that uh, would want to ex register as an export producer, they need to comply with the 70% uh, 
commitment to export the total production. And uh, okay, so that's the requirement for export uh, oriented. Domestic, uh, uh, you can still export uh, your uh, output, but uh, you don't have, but, but if you are registered as domestic, then you don't uh, enjoy the 5% SCIT. Next slide, please. Here I'm just showing uh, the regist registration process for BOI. We need an endorsement from the Department of Agriculture uh, prior to accepting the application for registration. We evaluate the project uh, based on the technical uh, feasibility. Uh, we also need uh, to evaluate or analyze ex ante cost benefit of the project, including the socioeconomic benefits. We are given the 20 working days based on ARTA law to uh, decide on the project uh, application. And for those projects that are uh, 1 billion and above, we will elevate it to the Fiscal Incentives Re Review Board for the decision on the granting of the incentives applicable to the project. But for those projects that are that cost uh, 1 billion and below, it's only up to the BOI board to decide on the grant of the incentives. The next slide, uh, these are just uh, a, a, a list of uh, registered BOI projects for livestock. Here, uh, we, we have registered this number of uh, projects. Uh, we have registered nine uh, projects uh, for commercial production of uh, livestock and uh, four uh, projects, uh, a support facility uh, like uh, cold chain uh, storage uh, and warehousing projects. We also uh, registered seven meat processing facilities uh, from 20. 10 to 2021. So a total of uh, 289.59 million pesos were granted as income tax holiday to these projects, uh, to commercial production, to commercial livestock production projects. And uh, for support industries, uh, we have, uh, there's no ITAs granted yet. And for a uh, meat processing facility, we have granted 52.21 million peso of invest uh, of uh, incentives. The investments that were uh, infused by the nine commercial livestock production projects uh, reach uh, 7.47 billion pesos, uh, and generating a total of 625 employment. And for support uh, service uh, facilities like cold chain, investments uh, reach 1.8 billion pesos and employment is uh, 351. For the seven meat processing facilities that were registered, uh, it, uh, around 6.558 billion peso investments were infused with 1,654 employment generated. So these are only from 20. 10 to 2021. I think that's the last slide. Okay, thank you very much for this opportunity to present BOI uh, initiatives for the livestock industry. Thank you. Okay, okay, Arnold. Arnold, we have uh, our next speaker who's uh, Resume is on the left side of the screen. And uh, I'd like to add quickly that uh, as far as I uh, know, he has been a uh, consistent advocate for the development of the livestock industry in our country. So, uh, uh, Danny, you have the show. It's your show now. Danny. Thank you very much, Oscar. Uh, thank you for having me. I'd like also to thank uh, uh, Dr. Shell and I'd like to acknowledge uh, Director Raquel uh, and uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Morales, who is here, and uh, Professor Matthew. Um, I was given a limited time, so I'd be quick. All right. Uh, 
I don't know if you see the screen, but uh, yes, we can see it. But my my uh, my assignment. Thank you very much, Arnold. My assignment is uh, pushing for livestock interested development. And uh, all of you know about this uh, GDP 5.6 uh, last quarter last year as 7.7. Uh, .7. We will know what happened in this first quarter by May 11 after election. We will know that, uh, the performance of our GDP, of our economy. Um, The uh, livestock and poultry contributed 27.75% of the total agricultural output with uh, all, more than uh, half a trillion pesos uh, in output value, uh, 252, 000, uh, 252 billion for livestock and uh, 235 for uh, poultry. The agriculture has not been considered as a key sector by the successive government in the Philippines and has been maintained at low level over the past decade. Oscillating between 1.3 and 1.9 of the total government budget. However, agriculture brings 8.8 uh, to 10% of GDP to the country and employs nearly 25% of its population as such. The country's agricultural orientation index is about 0.8 one eight in comparison with the agriculture orientation index of one in the US and 0.6 in Vietnam. Among the DA budget, more than 70% goes to rice program, while rice crops only contributed 20 to 22% of the agriculture, forestry, and fisheries production value. Um, to note the reason behind this is to limit inflation and avoid a shortage of this essential staple food for Filipinos rather than helping rice farmers or aiming at being self-sufficient. The large share of the budget being allotted to rice, it leaves little to the development of other agricultural commodities, such as aquaculture, livestock, and poultry production. This will limit the direct support available to rebuild the pork supply following the initiated impact of the African swine fever. Um, from the livestock and poultry sector, hog contributed 80.5% of the output and chicken at 68.7%. I'll be, in my presentation, I'll be concentrating on these two items and perhaps that's a little on the dairy sector. And uh, one thing to note is about the chicken eggs, which has been increasing during the pandemic. Um, and uh, because of the African swine fever, the uh, Cordillera, Ilocos region, Cagayan Valley, Central Luzon, especially Central Luzon, and Calabar Zone was hit hard uh, with a total of average about 22.3% in 2020, negative 22.3% and uh, negative 4.5% uh, growth rate. Uh, in the 2021 and 2022 level. <clears throat> Especially on the commercial uh, sector, commercial uh, producers, uh, the hardest hit is Central Luzon, uh, especially in, Web in uh, Bulacan and Nueva Ecija. And in Calabar Zone, mostly in uh, uh, Batangas. We'll see here it's about for the two, uh, Central Luzon and uh, Calabar Zone will be about almost 2 million hugs. Uh, but uh, come 2022, uh, the Central Luzon area is beginning to recover uh, slowly, but is uh, recovering. And also the Bico region. Now, because of the loss of uh, Central Luzon, a startup producer, we now have the Western Visayas, Central Visayas and Calabar Zone. Uh, replacing that was lost in the Luzon area. Calabar Zone is recovering, I said, and uh, Batangas is holding. Uh, and uh, hopefully, uh, Central Luzon will get back uh, soon to recover. And in growth rate, uh, HUG has a negative 20.8% 20 in 2020, 2021. Um, and what is uh, telling is the dairy sector in 2020, there's a 9.6% positive growth. 
and and being resilient uh, uh, for for the sector. Uh, Carabao also is increasing uh, despite the previous year's 2020 decline. It's beginning to grow because of the demand, perhaps for meat. Uh, we are importing a quarter of a billion uh, dollars of meat from India for the Carabao beef. And chicken eggs, you'll see on the chicken eggs, it's a positive 9.2% growth. The Philippines is one of the world's largest pork, pork producers with a herd of 12.7 million hogs in 2020. And the 10th largest consumer uh, before uh, ASF. According to Bai, a Filipino typically are ate about uh, 15 kilos of pork. Uh, in 2019, higher than the average consumption in the rest of the world, although much lower than countries like Vietnam or China. According to the to our good friend uh, Rosen de Sol, chairman of the uh, Samahang Industria ng Agricultura, the industry lost some uh, 5.8 million heads and uh, equivalent to around 135 billion pesos in losses due to the ASF. Nicanor Briones um, of the Pork Producers Federation of the Philippines, or ProPort, who is also a member of our chamber, uh, Picati, said the hog racers had to drastically cut supply as they dealt with the massive losses. They had to reduce supply further than restaurants when restaurants close uh, mid-March of 2020 due to the coronavirus pandemic, it takes around five to six months to raise a pig, which means racers who lost hogs in the ASF outbreak could not immediately bounce back. In rural areas, it is, a very, com it is very common for households to own between one and 10 pigs to feed its own family and generate a small revenue. Pigs being part of local culture and as there are very few other ways to earn an income in those areas. As such, there was still about 8 million pigs in 2020 backyard farms, accounting for about 64% of the total national production in 2019, uh, pre-ASF. One of the challenges is what do these farmers do now that ASF is widespread? A piggery farm is considered backyard by the government when in rural areas, and having a maximum of one saw and 10 heads or isang inahin, and then medium scale piggery have two inahin and 11 to 20 heads, while large scale piggery have more than two saws and more than 20 heads. Uh, you see the uh, Meat uh, consumption in the Philippines has been growing at uh, positive 3.6% per annum over the last decade. And pork consumption is at 2.7% per annum. Only chicken grows faster at 5.4%. Yet, uh, even before ASF, domestic pork production could not keep up pace with the demand growth. And import volumes were growing at a close of 10% per annum over the period. In 2018, Imports accounted for 70% of consumption, up from just 7% in 2008. Pork is highly prized by Filipinos, representing the central food on special occasions and considered an everyday staple. It was the number one meat in 2018 with consumption of 15 kilograms per capita, although chicken is a very close second. Urban consumers are wealthier, consume more meat, and are more exposed to modern retail, processed food, and chain restaurants. This is where the vast majority of imported pork go. Pork is a, an everyday food and the meat most Filipinos have always preferred, from longanisa, tocino, uh, pork chinigang, or grilled yempo. It is also the centerpiece served at most uh, festivities. Uh, you have lechon, a, a very popular dish as an important status symbol, the national dish adobo is also a traditionally pork-based with a meat-based stewed with soy sauce, vinegar, garlic, and peppercorns. 
In typical authentic Filipino cooking, no part of the pig goes unused. There is at least a dish for each part of the pig. For example, ears and liver are used to make sizzling sisig. Trotters for, to prepare for fam famous uh, crispy pata. The skin is deep fried and serve as chicharon. Intestine to make barbecue skewers and blood to prepare dinuguan. Now this is the uh, average farm gate price during Christmas season in 2020, 2020, 2021. We see an increase in prices of about 23% in 2020 and 21.4% in 2021. On an annual, on a natural, on a national level, the uh, farm gate prices in 2021 is at 159, and uh, for chicken is 110. Uh, one is to note that the, uh, based on the uh, claim of CNAG, uh, the break-even uh, price for uh, for hog is about 150 uh, pesos per kilo, and for chicken, uh, about 95 pesos per kilo. Uh, yesterday, the price of chicken per farm gate is 107, and that's uh, still the hog is uh, holding on to 150 level. President Duterte issued a executive order last uh, February 2021 imposing a 60-day price uh, ceiling on pork at 270 per kilo for kasim or pie uh, and 300 per kilo for yempo and 160 kilo per kilo for dressed chicken. Prior to this, the Department of Agriculture released suggested retail prices of similar range. These efforts have not been helpful. The price ceiling, Bender said, is simply too low and they would be forced to sell at great loss. Uh, Sinag's Kasendong said that the acceptable retail price of pork from, is from 330 pesos per kilo to 380 per kilo. Uh, my wife just uh, bought a kilo of uh, uh, choice meat just yesterday at 380 for pork. With a price ceiling set too low for vendors and producers that led to, a trigger, to triggering a so-called pork holiday. The situation led to a uh, supply shortage some vendors stopped selling pork last February of 2021. Dr. Ramon Clarete of the UP School of Economics also opposed the directive. He said that telling hog producers to sell scarce pork at below market value kicks them out of the pork business instead and blows away our prospects of quickly normalizing production. Pre-COVID-19, most of the domestic pork production was ending in retail channel with markets and supermarkets, while pork imports were mainly going to the meat processing industry, like food service channel was supplied by both, and about 50% of pork imports went to the meat processing, 30% to food retail, and only about 20% to food service. In the Philippines, there has been a continuous fight between meal processors and importers on one side, and local farmers and breeders on the other. The first point out a high risk of shortage and increased end consumer prices if the import duties are not reduced or subsidized, especially as the international prices are going up. The latter, the domestic agriculture will not survive if imports are not banned or highly discouraged. Both have a point and a balance is necessary as well as politically sensitive. Pig producer from uh, AS ASF uh, Free Mindanao regions and the Visayas have been sending live pigs and frozen pork to Luzon to help ease the supply problem there. But COVID-19 has strongly reduced the purchasing power of many Filipinos, whom many can only afford processed meat products. The Secretary Dar has been meeting and navigating between both commercial farms and meat processors, while continuously reassuring the population on food products availability to avoid uh, price or to avoid panic buying. The 10 uh, largest prayers produce only about 10% of the total pig production of the country. 
They often integrate part of the chain, including feed production, slaughterhouses, cutting plants, processing plants, meat brands, and retail and food service outlets. Most are local and some belong to a conglomerate with activities in real estate, retail, energy, airline, communication, which give them a strong investment power, the ability to rebuild and take advantage of the void left by the ASF. The remaining 26% of pig production come from commercial farms, which are very heterogeneous. From tiny ones having two sows and 10 heads to large ones of more than 5,000 sows. The better of these independent farms will be able to weather even profit from ASF. They will form part of the recovery process. You see on this screen, uh, San Miguel Foods has a 700,000 uh, production per year for piglets or 44,100 metric tons uh, of carcass weight equivalent. And we have uh, Charumpakpan or CP from Thailand, uh, also with broiler, hog and layer, uh, with the uh, plan to build a triple A uh, slaughterhouse. San Miguel is a triple A slaughterhouse and, and selling Monterey uh, meat shop and the uh, Hormel brand. And then we have Formos Farm uh, with a brand uh, with partnership with La Filipina uh, with 15,750 metric tons of production per annum. Universal Rubina Corporation, we have Biotech Farm, Bounty Fresh or Bounty Agro Venture, uh, Chooks to Go, uh, as we have, uh, usually have that in, the, in, the, in, the, in our community. And then New Hope from uh, China, uh, we're uh, planning also to build a triple A uh, slaughterhouse, also producing uh, 100,000 uh, piglets uh, or 6,300 metric tons uh, of uh, kilos of uh, meat. And Filmico of, anua, of Animal uh, Nutrition uh, with the brand Good Meat at, and online shops. They have both of them, uh, most of them have broilers, uh, hogs, and layers. The meat processing industry. There are 178 NMIS licensed meat processing plants in the country, most of them being AA. Majority of them are located in NCR region, in NCR region three and region four A, and most and most import the meat from processing. Actually, only about 15 percent of uh, raw materials requirements of the local meat processing industry is supplied domestically because meat processors require manufacturing grade raw materials, which cannot be complied with by locally available raw material with the following issues. A technical mismatch, processor require industrial grade. Uh, usually the local producer produce about uh, 80 kilos, 80 to 100 kilos because uh, they say let, less fat and with, with a bigger fat, you cannot sell it in the in the wet market, and if uh, the but the the import the processors are buying 150 kilo uh, meat, which has a uh, thicker fat. So uh, there's a technical mismatch, cost consideration, mechanically separated or the bone meat, used for hot dog and sausages, and Indian buffalo meat, for corned beef is cheaper than local meat. Support facilities gap. Refrigeration requirement of processors are not met by the local livestock and poultry producers. And consistency, local production of manufacturing meat is not consistent in quality and fat content. There is a clear lack of cold chain, including slaughterhouses being open air, a lack of cold storage and cold trucks, as well as lack of knowledge. Also note, pork is more expensive when produced locally than when imported, despite uh, high import taxes, uh, if it will be returned back to a 35% level. Those reasons, supply, cost, and cold chain, have encouraged meat processors, importers, and traders to import pork. Between 85 to 90% of the imported pork goes to either the small street restaurants and canteens or to the processing industry. The remainder, mainly ends in the food service channel 
and in a few supermarkets acting as wholesalers. An estimated 25% of total pork consumed in the country is processed, mainly sausages, but also ham, cured meat, and canned meat, in which variety pork meat, like offal, and pork pots are used. PAMPI, or the Philippine Association of Meat Processors, estimates the domestic processed meat sector to be valued at 300 billion pesos in 2019, growing at 6 to 7% each year over the past 10 years. Processed meat includes both fresh processed meat, of which two-thirds is hot dog sausage, and canned meat, mainly meatloaf, corned beef, and Vienna sausage. Sausages are uh, the most important popular meat product consumed in the Philippines with a high household's penetration of 80% on the average, but even as high as 60 to 70% among classes D and E. Domestic demand for both fresh and processed meat is such that local production is insufficient, making the Philippines the seventh largest importer of pork globally, and the volumes have been steadily rising over the last decade. As uh, ASF is present in Luzon and the southern part of Mindanao, but there is no case in the Visayas Islands and northern Mindanao. Among the four top uh, pork producing provinces in the country, the two largest have been uh, severely hit, which is Bulacan and Batangas. The virus spread uh, in the Philippines uh, for various reasons, uh, including swill feeding, which has always been a common practice among smallhold farmers for both financial and educational reasons. Lack of biosecurity due to the inability uh, to afford measures in the backyard or even small medium commercial farms. Contract breeding also moves, in, moves disease pigs around the market and lack of respect of safety procedures when they exist even in large commercial farms due to lack of awareness and education or talagang pasaway lang. Insufficient government financial support to compensate the farmers' loss, generating hidden cases and double dead with, with infected or even dead pigs going into the food chain where they can be monetized. Absence of clear guidelines on how to handle the dead pigs, leading to many pigs' bodies thrown away in water, contaminating underground water sources. Inefficient and inadequate control from the authorities at borders and quarantine checkpoints within the country due to lax attitudes, lack of education, how to handle pig movement, arrangement and corruption, lack of financial means. All of these things are now being, I think, being addressed and uh, Real Green Morales is here by, by the Bai. ASF has moved more slowly through the Philippines than China and Vietnam. The slow spread is very largely due to the unique geography which means that pigs are normally produced close to the consumption point, slowing the geographic spread that is often accelerated by traders moving cheap pigs, long distances as seen in both China and Vietnam. After ASF infected China in August of 2018, it spread to Mongolia in January of 2019, then to Vietnam in February, then Cambodia in March of 2019, Hong Kong in May, North Korea also in May, and Laos in June. The Philippines was one of the last Asian markets to report ASF. Thailand has joined the list in the mid-2020. According to the Bai, the government had been bracing for the virus arrival since the outbreak in China. Prevention measures included a ban on pigs and pork products, imports from a long list of countries that included China, Germany, Belgium, Vietnam, Hungary, and Czech Republic. But measures are taken in reaction in order to stop the spread of ASF. Banning of pork imports. As soon as the first ASF outbreak occurred in an exporting country, the authorities have banned the import of live pigs, pork products, and byproducts from those countries, as well as preemptively from some others, like uh, such as Germany. Educating farmers and backyard raisers. Backyard farmers supply most of the local pork production. The government understood the importance of educating them 
on the importance to avoid swill feeding since food scraps, especially from international vessels, um, happened here in the Manila Bay, may be uh, infected and can lead to disease spreading. The principle of maintaining of animal health and prevention of diseases through biosecurity and good animal, animal husbandry practices. In Payata, some of them are selling uh, uh, ano yun? Uh, yung uh, pagka, pagkain baboy. Uh, to make it a business in Payatas. The mix, the mix uh, system is, yes, there, there's a mix effectiveness on the system. Since the farmer's response is limited by the reliance on pig sales for cash flow and inability to afford to change their system. Mga pasaway. And zoning, the DA has enforced food safety measures and observed quarantine procedures, such as the prohibition and of the transportation of live animals, meat products and byproducts unless accompanied by a veterinary health certificate and a relevant shipping permit from Bai. In mid-September, DA implemented the 1710 protocol in suspected areas to control suspected disease, the diseases. In a one kilometer radius from the site of inspection, hogs are prohibited from entering or leaving the area and the site is to eventually be depopulated. In a seven kilometer radius, Hugs are under surveillance with restricted movements and blood is tested. For the 10 kilometer radius, mandatory monitoring and reporting of swine disease occurrences are implemented. The modified 1710, where only the pigs with, within the 500 meters from the affected farm are subjected to mandatory culling, uh, has been introduced. The government justified it, saying only 30% or 200,000 pigs called by the government were infected by ASF. But I think it's almost probably more on the financial reasons. The LGUs have also applied several additional measures to control the disease, including animal movement restrictions, screening, isolation, destruction of animal products, disposal of carcasses, and enforced biosecurity. The Philippine government Decided at first to compensate backyard farmers who willingly culled the pigs with 3,000 pesos per head, meaning less than a third of the hogs market value estimated at 10,000 pesos. As a consequence, many farmers did not declare when their hogs are, were sick, which largely contributed to spread the disease. In October, Duterte approved the increase of financial assistance for backyard raisers to 5,000 per head but only for the first 20 head and not counting the piglets. The consequence remained very similar. The DA also offered zero interest loans to meet vendors who are struggling to comply with the price ceiling imposed during the early part of 2021 to enable them to buy, to buy pork carcasses directly from hog raisers and major agricultural commodities from farmers, cooperatives, and associations, and sell these at reasonable prices to consumers in Metro Manila. However, producers doubt that the DA can implement these measures because according to them, the racers affected by ASF have yet to receive the aid promised. In an attempt to speed up the recovery of the backyard hog industry in the country, and in particular in some parts of Central Luzon and Calabar Zone, the DA invested in the INSPIRE project and part of the DA's National Livestock Program. Those programs involve the establishment of swine multiplier farms through clusters of 20 backyard hog farmers each. Every member will then be provided with five piglets, each 20 bags of animal feed and biologics. BAE also has implemented an ASF Sentinel program to encourage commercial pig farmers to restock their farms. Two three-month-old sentinel pigs are to be sourced from an ASF negative farm. The number of sentinel pigs should be 5 to 10% of the total farm capacity and have access to all areas of the barn. After a minimum of two months with continuous observation and consecutive negative testing for ASF, the farm may proceed to restock. This is the map uh, for the ASF affected area on the left you see the red one, which is an infected zone. On the right, these are the effort now being done by BAI and the Department of Agriculture 
and you can see this that the 100 the gray one 181 to 800 days there are no reported cases because now they're trying to uh, it's now improving now, what is the outlook for 2025? National pork production expected to reach its lowest volume uh, in the second part of 2021, that you see in the, in the previous table as shown. From where it will start to its slow recovery with consequences on the production structure. Since ASF is expected to, rain, to remain in the Philippines until a vaccine is found, like COVID-19, we need a vaccine. And despite the low cost uh, for backyard farmers to start again, backyard production will drop to low levels, leaving a void for commercial farms to develop into pulled by high prices, leading to reverse market share. Many small commercial farms will also have closed with some acquired by larger farms, having more financial capacity to invest in the necessary scaling up and biosecurity leading to further market concentration. Successful farms will have better biosecurity, which will reduce the impact of ASF. Geographically, within the archipelago, pork production will be even more concentrated around Metro Manila in Region 3 and Region 4A, where demand is the highest. Pig productivity will, Im will importantly recover driven by the higher share of large commercial farms, as well as their knowledge and financial capabilities compared to backyard farmers. Pork imports will increase in order to meet the domestic demand. This will be facilitated by a relaxing of the current government position on imports in an effort to control uh, retail prices. You will see on this graph that in two, year 2000, 22% is the commercial uh, producers. But by 2025, 70% of the producers will be commercial and goes down to 2030. That means that the commercial producers will now be slowly replacing the backyard producers. 2030 outlook. Pork production levels will have nearly recovered to pre-ASF levels despite a slightly lower herd thanks to the increased productivity and heavier slaughtered pigs. The majority of pork production will come from large commercial farms, either contracted to or owned by slaughter groups. Commercial farms will integrate upstream with the feed production as well as downstream with slaughtering and meat cutting. Some of them will even integrate to retail and food service like meat shops, QSR, and online deliveries. Domestic production efficiency will be improved markedly. Research and development in better feeds, breeding and rearing techniques, automation, and the adoption of existing technology from other more advanced market. It is also aided by the removal of the less productive backyard. Which is, a, which is make it important of the clustering made, being made by the Bai uh, for the repopulation. Because being uh, a cooperative or a cluster group, they can already also go into uh, forward and backward linkage on the supply chain. Cold chain will have improved in particular, thanks to private investment in order to manage both imported frozen meat and increase slaughtering in AAA plants. Pork branding will start to become the norm as it is already becoming for chicken. You will have magnolia chicken, uh, you go to the supermarket, bounty fresh and so on. Imports will remain high, high due to lower prices. Improved cold chain and consumers new habit to manage, store and eat frozen meat. The backyard will not recover, not unless they're clustered. All those small parts will remain due to the geographic challenges of the Philippines. A full production recovery is not expected within 2030, but the industry by this point will be of a very different structure. Large modern farms will dominate production, while modern slaughter plants will be the main supply channel for the major urban areas. 
Remote rural areas will likely still shelter rem remnants of the old system. Wide ASF outbreak in the country and the pork shortage was anticipated. Massive import of chicken have been made to ensure the availability of affordable protein for the population. As a consequence of the economic situation since the COVID, overall demand for raw meat products and in particular chicken has dropped. A large amount of chicken are currently still in domestic freezers during the time, resulting to a historically low price point. It even went down to 80, I think, per kilo of the retail price. Chicken was already part of day-to-day -day consumption in the Philippines with consumption per capita nearly similar to pork. But this historically raw price on chicken combined with the high price of pork will accelerate the population to increase consumption of chicken over pork. While the market share of chicken will surge in the short term, it will subside in the long term as pork production recovers and prices fall. But by 2030, chicken will have held onto a large, a far higher market share of uh, around 33% of the protein basket to pork's 25% that it enjoyed in 2019, which is just 26% at the expense of pork. The price of whole chicken reached 190 to 200 pesos per kilo. This is partly due to consumers eating more chicken now as a source of protein, with pork prices surging. Before pork prices spike, the chicken industry faced problems with oversupply as demand went down due to the hotel and restaurants closure. After the oversupply in 2020, the industry is now and held back supply amid increased demand, causing the rise in prices. In addition, broiler products producers shifted to layers to produce eggs instead of chicken meat. Eggs cannot be imported and it's easy to cook during the pandemic. No need for any ricado. Uh, you can just uh, boil it or fry it. It's nice, especially with uh, fresh carabao's milk from DBF Dairy. Farming, <laughs> the overall inflation per January reached 4.2%, <laughs> reaching the government target at 2 to 4%. Now, this graph will show that in 2019, you showed the poly meat, pol poultry meat is only at 26%. By 2030, it is projected to be at 33%. And the pig meat will be about 26% in 2019, uh, 20, go down to 20% by 2025, and by 2030, uh, you will have 25%. Now, on the, on the livestock feeds, considering, the, considering that animal feeds account for 60 to 70% of the cost of producing meat, while yolo corn accounts for 60% of the cost of producing animal feeds. The reduction in the corn tariff, right now it's 5%, will have, will have bring down the cost of producing meats and eventually their market prices. This in turn can help tame the impact of rising oil prices in the country's inflation. According to PAFMI, who is also a member of PICAFI, uh, Philippine Association of Feed Millers, Yellow corn demand for feed milling was about 9 million metric tons, while local corn production was only about 5 million metric tons for a local, local supply sufficiency of only 57%, saying the huge supply gap is being addressed through importation. While feed wheat is commonly used and imported, as an alternative to yellow corn due to its more competitive price, yellow corn is still the preferred feed input, especially for poultry, given its inherent qualitative benefits over feed wheat. Based on the 2019 to 2021 Bureau of Customs data, the Philippines on average have imported 49% of its feed wheat from the Black Sea region, which houses both Russia and Ukraine with 51% of that coming from Ukraine and 70%, 17% from Russia. Given the ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict, 
there is an urgent need to further diversify our feed input sourcing and to lower the tariff on non-ASEAN yellow corn. If you want really to develop the, the, and push uh, the livestock industry, we need to develop our corn industry. The corn industry is essentially the only major supplier to feed millers. The other major feed ingredients are basically imported and small amounts are locally produced and are obtained from varied sources, mostly in the form of byproducts from among small producers to the feed millers themselves. Corn, especially yolo corn, accounts for about 70% of local feed requirement, no matter how big in terms of size, and regardless of their financial capability, feed millers use yellow corn in the production of feeds. The availability and affordability of this input has a great impact on feed millers' operation. And in total, if you want to address really the problem of livestock and poultry, we need to address the problem of the corn industry. Now, the corn is being produced 80% at 22% from Region 2, Cagayan Valley, Central Mindanao, 16%, Southern Mindanao, uh, Region 10 and Region 12, ARMN, Northern Hello. Mindanao. Okay, yeah. And the rest are in the local and central Luzon, Central Visayas. If we are to give them uh, uh, post service facilities, huh? sorry, Tapos na? the time is up. Yeah. The rest are parts of the country like Ilocos region, Central Luzon, and Central Visayas. This is where corn being produced. Now, talking about dairy, which I belong in the industry where I belong, we are importing more than one billion dollars of uh, dairy products in 2020, 2019, and 2020, and all less than one percent uh, of uh, local requirement is being produced uh, by the country. These are coming from 26,000. Uh, estimated dairy animals. We need 800,000 animals in the milk line. That means about 1.5 to 1.6 million uh, animals. And we have only 26,000. Uh, we have 10, uh, well, cow's milk are 64% uh, of our, uh, what, what we are using now, our consumption. Carabao's milk is uh, produced 31%. Uh, and goat's milk only at 5%. So your goats, uh, Arnold, will be a niche for this product. Now, looking at the PSA data, we'll see here that uh, Carabao has about 2.8 million uh, inventory. And out of this 2.8 million, only 19,000 is for dairy. And for cattle, 2.6 million, uh, is the total inventory, but 27,000 is only for dairy. If we are to, uh, to really improve our health, herd, and produce more milk, we need more animals converted to dairy through artificial insemination and improve, improving the breed. For goat, 3.8 million inventory and only 2,800 is our number, dairy goats. Now, uh, towards developing the livestock industry, which is really why we are here, uh, discussing this. For hogs, my, my take is we repop the repopulation and solving the problem of ASF and other livestock and poultry diseases should be done. And I think this is being done by Bai. Dr. Uh, uh, Morales is here. I don't know if he's still here, but uh, we need to solve this. We need to find a, a, a vaccine uh, to, to solve the ASF like uh, in COVID. For chicken and also livestock, we develop the corn industry. With only 57% sufficient level, we can increase it more. Uh, we have 2.5 million hectares devoted to, uh, to corn. And if only 10% will be given post-harvest facilities, it will already improve further the quality and the, the number of, and, and also the price now is uh, or cheaper. Uh, imported corn is about 25 pesos per kilo. Our local corn is selling at 21 to 23 pesos. Still competitive. If they can produce uh, better quality, then they will be in a better position. And there's a lot of farmers benefiting from this corn industry, more than a million of them. Provide incentives to investments and easy access to credit. Easy access to credit, there, if, you, if you look at the data, 
207 billion pesos has been guaranteed by the Philippine Guarantee Corporation. Out of the 207 billion pesos, uh, only 500 million was guaranteed, which is uh, for agriculture. 3, million, 3 billion for medium and small industries. And 203 billion for real estate. That means the bigger one, Ayala Land, that's SM, we have the Mega World. And then all these people who do not need guarantee, and they're the one guaranteed by the Philippine Guarantee Corporation. I submit that it is as it is the responsibility of the state to protect the security of our nation to the armed forces. It is also the responsibility of the state to make sure that food is available in every table of every Filipino. But he has to put forward a guarantee system to make sure that our farmers can get access to credit because they have no collateral to produce. Uh, and uh, agriculture is a high risk for banks because of the manual procedures of the central bank. If they do not follow the manual procedure central bank, their license will be taken away. That's why banks are staying away and just paying the penalties. And out of this, the penalties given already, they can already have 15 billion guaranteed already for agriculture based on the agricultural guarantee and loan fund that were generated. And 500 million is the guarantee that was given by the national government. That is how they are helping our agricultural sector. We improve cold chain and logistics. Charlie is here. This is the the uh, yes. The, okay, ito ang pinaka okay, Charlie. Improve cold chain and logistics. The whole supply chain. We need Charlie here uh, to solve this problem of logist of uh, livestock industry, farm consolidation and mechanization. We need an army of community organizers to consolidate these people and bring them to that level that can compete to commercial farms and then mechanize and improve and have improved and efficient production. For dairy, we undertake the herd buildup. As I presented to you earlier on the, on the uh, table, we can uh, improve the, the, the genetics of this and, and, and convert them into dairy as well as uh, for meat purposes. And technically it's based on AI, uh, artificial dissemination. And, uh, for great, and for greater productivity, uh, for more uh, modern technology and research. And of course, so say the milk feeding program, which recently uh, we, have, we have a fight with the Department of, Ed of Education that's uh, easing us out of uh, the, the, the dairy farmers, the Filipino dairy farms being eased out in supplying the milk feeding program and giving it to the multinational corporations. So that's, I think, uh, is my take. And thank you very much. Thanks to everyone. Okay. Thank you, uh, thank you Danny. <laughs> thank you, Danny. And uh, we have uh, an important uh, activity, and that is a photo op for all the speakers and uh, the other persons for uh, a uh, everlasting rem remembrance of this very, very important uh, subject of our CEO uh, Academy. So Arnold, are we are we ready? Yes, okay, one, two, three, another one please. One, two, three. Maricel, if Director Morales is on board, can you please include him? Director Morales. Director, are you on? Okay. Present. Ah. Director Morales, can you please open your video so that we can include you in the... Okay. Is there? Yeah. Okay, please. One, two, three. Another one, please. One, two, three. Thank you. At this point, uh, we'll go to a QA, and a uh, and we are happy to see uh, Dr. Morales back. Uh, yes, Dr. Morales, uh, you may have... Uh, something to clarify or to ask, we will welcome very much to hear from you. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much for at uh, uh, maraming salamat po no, uh, to the uh, Philippines for uh, uh, inviting us uh, to Bureau of Animal Industry in this uh, very important meeting. I, I heard a very uh, extensive uh, presentation uh, from uh, Director Echage as well as uh, Dr. Fausto. Si Dr. Fausto, si, uh, uh, si Sir Danny, o pwede na pong director ng baing, ay uh, <laughs> expanded on the issues uh, very uh, uh, you know, uh, 
paunti no. Uh, anyway, if I may uh, try to summarize po no, yung uh, uh, issues uh, that uh, are hounding the uh, industry. Uh, basically one is uh, yung kung ating efficiency no. Uh, yung efficiency natin as uh, uh, presented by uh, Sir Danny Pausto is driven actually by by uh, a lot of cost na consequently ay uh, hindi po natin kontrolado or higher than our uh, neighbors. Why? Uh, yun pong production cost natin, for example, sa poultry and even sa swine, yun pong magagandang mga breeds natin, yung mga breeders, are all coming outside. Ano? Actually, uh, yun pong problema natin, uh, may uh, bird flu ang US, may bird flu ang Canada. But hindi natin sila maiban uh, as a country uh, precisely because uh, we have to strike a balance. Uh, we're looking at the uh, the biosecurity and at the same time, yung distance, uh, malaki yung land na sila. Ang primary consideration po natin pag binan natin as a country ang US at Canada, mawawalan po tayo ng source ng breeder stocks for our poultry. So ang cycle po niyan, uh, after two years, kailangan natin siya magpalit. So ngayon po sa BAE, we are firming up actually our importation of breeders. So we have a good uh, forecasting of uh, our uh, available uh, stocks uh, for broiler and of course a layer. It's a bit difficult uh, doon po sa hugs kasi yung hugs uh, medyo hindi natin uh, kita yung inventaryo. Yan po yung naging problema natin sa ASF. No? We're all, all uh, only expecting like 12 million standing inventory pero it appears na around 14 million pa yung inventory natin. So hindi po maganda yung uh, pag-inventaryo sa baboy. So yung breeder cost po natin, yung feed cost, no? uh, sometime ago eh, during the last quarter, second half of uh, 2021, nagkaroon po ng isang malaking bagyo sa West Coast na apektuhan yung uh, pag-load ng soya. Uh, sa US at ang soya dito nag-spike ang price niya no? uh, nag-double more than double and wala pang available na supply ganun po yung nagiging dependence natin ngayon yung wheat ganun din po uh, with uh, uh, Ukraine uh, Russia uh, conflict and of course yung corn uh, 60% sufficiency lamang tayo sa corn and uh, yung quality naman ng corn natin ay isa rin uh, problema so we have to be uh, uh, importing as well. So yun po, yung, uh, yun po yung isang malaking problema natin. And of course, uh, with the uh, efficiency, yung production din po natin, no? our producers, the commercial sectors, for example, sa hugs, they are producing 90 kilograms uh, weight po uh, ng hugs. Bebenta na nila yan. At ang uh, manok din po natin ay nasa around 2 kilos lang live weight, ibinebenta na nila. So ang nagsasuffer po dito yung efficiency we're not able to attain the efficiency na nakukuha ng ating mga neighbors. And in the process, na-exclude din po yung isang malaking market, yung nabanggit ni Sir Danny kanina, yung uh, processors. Uh, we tried, ano po, uh, even a long time ago, there has been uh, so much effort na magkita sana yung local producers na yung mga processors natin dito, dito na lang kukuha ng ng uh, supply sa ating mga local producers but the the specs the specifications of la, locally produced meat dahil mababa nga yung kanilang uh, weight uh, by the time of harvest hindi po nagmamatch do sa requirement ng uh, ng ating mga processor so eto po yung mga disalign no na uh, po pwede din naman sana may correct kung magkakaroon lang ng paradigm shift doon sa ating uh, sector and then of course, yung pong value adding natin, uh, medyo yung uh, producers po natin, uh, karamihan ng ating mga producers ay dependent lamang sila dun sa, ang, ang core competency nila is stops at production. No? So hindi sila end-to-end. -end. Uh, ano po ibig ko sabihin? For example, big companies like San Miguel, before, uh, and to end sila, pero karmi pa din, ibinibenta sila, sila nagmamarket tong karmi nila. So nawawala yung trader in between. And now look at them. They're even selling yun po mga ready to fry. No? Like CP of uh, Thailand. 
Di ba? Uh, sa Thailand po kasi ganun eh. Uh, yung CP, pa, meron siyang parang mga 7-Eleven ha. Uh, microwaveable na lang. Uh, pag in-order mo, microwave ready to eat. Yun po yung nawawala. Uh, in, and in the process, na, naging independent po yung ating mga producers at marami po yan doon sa at the mercy ng ating mga traders. So yung predatory trading, uh, nagiging problema po natin yan even the time of ASF mo. Tumaas po yung presyo ng baboy ng hanggang 400 kasi umabot na hanggang 250 ang farm gate price. Because uh, the traders, doon sa kanilang kagustuhan na makabili ng baboy, parang nagkaroon na sila ng competitive bidding. Nawala na rin po yung uh, value ng relationship ang sabi ng mga ibang mga farmers whereas before, uh, pag sinabi mo yung kaibigan mo na trader, kukunin ko yan sa ganitong price. I-reserve na yan sa'yo. Noon po nga uh, at the height of uh, ASF na wala po lahat yan. So kahit may commitment, pag mas mataas yung presyo, tumalabas yung baboy, ang nagsasuffer po yung consumers. So yan po yung uh, dalawa, no? yung efficiency, yung value adding, yun yung nagiging problema natin. And of course, animal health. Uh, underinvested po ang uh, uh, livestock and poultry sector when it comes to uh, diagnostic infrastructure. I think uh, si Secretary Habito knows this. Uh, and uh, they are also one of those uh, who answered ako lang sa private sector. Uh, at ito po ay hindi po madali ito na, na i-correct uh, simply because uh, medyo mataas po yung investment requirement para dito. But we are, we are uh, starting at uh, medyo uh, nakaka, nakakagalaw na po tayo. Uh, nonetheless, uh, it, will take, uh, it will still uh, take uh, a bit of time uh, para po maiayos natin to. And magkaroon tayo ng inclusive po na, na environment or in the private sector will have a, a significant role ano po, uh, when it comes to our diagnostic uh, uh, infrastructure. And of course, ang isa pong nakikita ko sa maikling panahon na nandito ako sa Bureau of Animal Industry, ayun pong organization, ano, yung structure ng government. The Bureau of Animal Industry as a national mandate. But... Uh, ang kanya pong uh, ang kanya pong uh, organization at ang kanya uh, mandato uh, ay nakalimit lang uh, uh, sa national pero ang uh, ang output po na kailangan niya at kailangan niyang pangatawanan ay hanggang doon sa grassroots hanggang sa local. Ang nagiging problema po natin dito, the local government units, no? The local uh, Uh, government veterinary offices are under the direct control of the local executives. And uh, whatever program that the Department of Agriculture or BAE has for that matter, it does not readily translate to action on the ground. It depends on the political condition on the ground. And we have seen this uh, during the time of ASF that uh, actually uh, we have a national guideline tapos ang mangyayari magkakaroon ng local na uh, local government units ng guideline which are actually contrary to the uh, issued guideline yun pong mga total ban uh, ang problema natin diyan do sa movement na ipakita rin yan kanina ni Sir Danny ang problema po doon uh, it encourages uh, smuggling ano kasi pag nagban ka nawawala yung local supply tataas ang price pag tumaas ang price may incentive po yun para doon sa mga smugglers Uh, yun po yung naging isang isang reason bakit uh, nag-spread din ang ASF mo. And uh, of course, uh, with that with that environment, uh, it follows that yung yung sustained capacity for development, the human resource po, yung skill set development ng mga tao, nag-stagnate din. So ang laki ng inuubos ng national government ng uh, ng pag-conduct ng trainings regularly. But then again, bilis magpalit ng tao sa local government. So you have to do the same training over and over again. So yung, uh, yung investment mo doon sa tao, hindi mo alam kung hanggang kailan mag-stay on. So you have to uh, do the training, spend the same amount of money year in, year out. Ganun po yung nangyayari. So uh, it drains ano, the, the government. So kung may pagdadalan ka ng pera, uh, napupunta doon sa training na paulit-ulit. So, yun po yung nagiging isang uh, uh, problema natin. And of course, uh, nabanggit po ni uh, Director Echagi kanina yung uh, sa investments. No? Uh, th- there has to be a form of investments for the local producers para po sila 
uh, sumugal or para po sila tumaya. Uh, lalo na dun sa nangyari sa ISF. Uh, nabanggit po kanina, uh, there has been a lot of uh, facilities no, provided by the government but these are loan facilities uh, sa commercial sector, sa land bank, sa DDP. It amounts about 42 billion, 38 billion sa land bank, 12 billion sa uh, DBP. And then of course, sa uh, ACPC, we have 800 million na nakalatch din po yan sa uh, DBP. So I, I think po yun yung, uh, yun yung mga nagiging problema. So babalik, paulit-ulit po ito. Ang, ang, ang problema po natin, this, this, sets, this sets of issues and problems has been here for for quite some time and uh, paulit-ulit po yung uh, nagiging problema dahil uh, parang ang hirap niyan lagyan ng solusyon. But then again, ang, uh, at the end of the day, uh, you, you can imagine po ang Bureau of Animal Industry has an annual budget of uh, 600 uh, to 800 million, 200 of which ay para sa Africa swine fever. And uh, most of this budget we have to we have to uh, allocate uh, para po bigyan ng uh, ng uh, mga, mga gamit, ano, yung mga regional animal disease diagnostic laboratories natin. Uh, in, in as much as we want to partner with the private sector doon sa ating uh, diagnostic facilities, majority po ng ating mga pro, ng ating farmers ay na, ng ating uh, production no, ay uh, accounted for by the smallholders. Uh, prior to ASF, 70% of uh, holdings in swine are with the smallholders. And in poultry, it's about like 40. Ganun din po. So, uh, kailangan nakagayak pa rin si government uh, even if there is a robust investment uh, on the private sector part. So, uh, I think uh, doon po pumapasok yung, yung uh, naging discussion. I, I, I uh, took note uh, kanina. No? Uh, so, efficiency sa value adding, investment sa animal health, yung organizational structure, and of course, yung sa funding po, uh, which again, babalik din naman doon sa investment. The, the government has really, uh, really has to invest uh, kung gusto niya magkaroon ng uh, output um, uh, na maganda uh, yung livestock and the uh, poultry sector. Medyo mahirap po kasi may binabanggit si uh, Sir Danny uh, yung, yung cold chain. Ano po? Uh, of course, hindi nakagayak si government na mag-maintain ng mga uh, cold, uh, cold storage warehouses. But uh, the government has to uh, provide an environment na kikita naman yung uh, mga cold storage warehouses. Ganun po yung uh, kailangan nating i-balance. Eh. So, yun sir, I think uh, that's uh, what I have for now. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Director Morales. And listening from our three speakers, uh, almost all the questions I had in mind uh, were really clearly answered. Uh, there's one overriding question in my mind, and that is whether we can feed our growing population. We are now over 100 million, but uh, hearing from our speakers, I think uh, we are uh, we should be able. Am I correct, uh, Danny and uh, Director Chage? Briefly. Yeah. Okay. We want to get a reassurance, no, Oscar. Yes, <laughs> we can we feed ourselves. We can feed. <laughs> all right, all right. So regardless, Actually, I have of, the same yes. question, Oscar. Uh, with with all of the things happening, you know, you know what happened, for example, in Indonesia because of the global events, they stopped exporting, for example, lang yung palm oil, di ba? And uh, we see a reverse in globalization. And the, you know, I didn't realize talaga na livestock and uh, uh, agri business is all about supply chain business, no? Yes. So it it, it 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 really hinges mm -hmm. over there. So. Kaya ba natin to if uh, are we future shock, you know, with with events that is uh, that are on the horizon, uh, and and there seems to be so many risks, di ba? Um, there's competitions, uh, there ASF, you know, the cost, um, yun yung cost na yun is a, a significant, uh, um, uh, you know, a disadvantage natin if you don't get to fix that. Logistics cost accounts to around thirty percent. If you don't just account yung ano yung livestock, yung chicken or pork in itself. You know the total cost is really very high, diba? Uh, and, and we are not competitive given the logistics performance index of the country. So uh, with all of those things, are we are we okay? <laughs> are we are we able to uh, keep ourselves? Uh, I, I I am feeling a little bit negative on this uh, from what I hear also. Data driven. Ang ganda ng pinakita ni 
ni Danny uh, and uh, you know ni Dr. Raquel data driven yung presentation eh and, and those numbers are are going to speak to itself and it makes me worry in, in some of those numbers na pinapakita are are we self sustainable if future chuck uh, if future chucks or or events really happen um hey, I, i'm not yeah i'm not i'm not interested of the of the 2030 dani I, i'm more interested about the next two to three years um pag pumutok ito kaya ba okay ba tayo dito <laughs> Sorry to be I mean, very emotional about this kasi galing lang sa isang logistics conference. Okay, we'd, Lahat like mga first, we'd, we'd like to hear first from uh, Danny. Yeah, this is a uh, practitioner. Yes. Ruth, if you really want to solve the problem uh sa meat natin, well, we have, we have fish naman as a alternative. Pero yung fish natin uubos din eh. Aquaculture and fisheries, yung catch fish, catch fish catch natin mawala. We're supposed to be a marine uh, country because of our Uh, geographical. But anyway, talking about meat, uh, livestock, and poultry, um, for me, uh, in general, you want to solve it one time, you solve the problem of corn. You address oh. natin yung corn. <laughs> yung pagkain, kahit kami, uh, in our dairy, pag hindi mo pinakain na yan, walang, walang gatas kang makukuha. <laughs> Wala kang gatas na makukuha. Especially, yeah, andun ang major cost nila, yung corn. And if we can solve that, uh, Feed wheat is the alternative, but we're getting it from Russia and Ukraine. You know, problem. That's why they're clambering to bring down the tariff of corn to, so that they can buy it somewhere else. But corn is 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 uh, pricey as far as the other countries are concerned. Mas mura ang corn natin dito. Kung magaling pa yung ating support sa corn industry, patutulungan natin ang mga farmers ma ano natin yung corn natin. Uh, corn is the number one. Yung pin, across across the board, solving the corn problem. You would solve a, a portion of the problem, uh, main problem of the livestock and poultry. Yung uh, yung uh, ASF kaya na ni Rail Green yan eh. <laughs> kaya na nila ginagawa na nila yan eh. Uh, hopefully, makadiscover tayo ng vaccine o makakuha tayo ng vaccine to solve that. Pero ma, it will it will pass. It will pass. And then commercial uh, commercial production, uh, commercial uh, product producers will will uh, overtake the backyard. But if we But kawawa naman yung mga, mga farmers na backyard holders. So but if we put them together and consolidate them and cluster them, problema dyan yung community organizing. To put them together, they can now compete as a cooperative. They can go to the supply chain, backward and forward linkages uh, in helping their... You know. Pero kung nag-iisa sila backyard-backyard, ubo sila dyan. So Thank, you. My... Thank you, Danny. Uh, I have a question to Director Echage. Shouldn't we skew the uh, incentives a lot more uh, towards medium enterprises or even small enterprises, which are uh, uh, majority of the, uh, like say, uh, growers of hogs are situated? They don't have one billion pesos. But maybe they have a few hundred thousand. Uh, you're muted, Demada. All right. Uh, as I heard from you, you are going to uh, make the present set of incentives a little bit more attractive for small... Can you hear me now, sir? Oh, yes, yes. Go ahead. Okay, yes. okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I, I will not use my headphone. Yeah, in, in fact, we have registered a, a number of uh, micro and small enterprises. Those that are based in the regions, uh, we the, the CREATE Act does not require a minimum investment cost. Uh, it's only about uh, how, where you locate the, the projects and under which tier you are based on the classification and the create. So uh, we actually uh, streamlined our process for uh, projects that are less than 15 million pesos. I see. We, 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 uh, we process them in within the three days, three working days, so that they can... Uh, have their certificate of registration and import the needed uh, capital equipment 
uh, to start commercial operation or to to import the breeding stocks if they need to uh, import breeding stocks. So uh, uh, we do not discriminate between the medium and the small and the large uh, projects. Yeah. So uh, I actually, uh, what we uh, submitted to the president uh, for the SIPP is uh, having a, ch a, 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 a food a security related activity, having higher incentives than the ordinary uh, project under Cheer One. So uh, we want uh, uh, to promote uh, manufacture of animal vaccine and provide them uh, higher uh, tax exemptions. We uh, want to promote uh, an integrated uh, production and processing activity, example, the dairy, uh, from the cattle raising to the production of the milk. And also we incentivize uh, commercialization of uh, emerging technology, those R&D that uh, the DOSP and the private sector has initiated and somebody or a private sector that want to uh, uh, commercialize uh, this uh, project so that we can have uh, innovation in our process and attain efficiency. Uh, uh, Director Morales mentioned about uh, decreasing efficiency in the sector. So uh, we, uh, pro we provide higher incentives for those uh, that will uh, uh, employ uh, new technology, modern technology in their processes. So those are uh, because BOI serves as a support to to the investors and to uh, the DA as a, as uh, the lead implementing agency of livestock. So we pro we encourage or promote re repopulation okay. of the hogs industry. Uh, even expansion. For example, uh, you want to increase capacity of your existing uh, activity or plant. We can uh, qualify for tax exemption as okay. a modernization okay. or expansion project. Thank you very much, uh, Director Chagay. And uh, before we close, Arnold, can you quickly show that uh, a coffee table book? Because there's a reason why I would like everybody to appreciate that. Uh, this uh, coffee table book features a power plant, the only power plant uh, from the private sector in Tawi Tawi. And this was inspired by the book of uh, Governor Shell Habito. Uh, his book titled uh, Braving It and Making It in uh, the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region uh, in Muslim Mindanao. This is his book. This was uh, published in 2012 uh, with the assistance of House Aid and the uh, assistance as well of the Management Association of the Philippines. And this inspired the investment by foreign uh, investors and uh, local investors for this power plant. So uh, I am showing this because the title of this book, Braving It and Making It, is, uh, can you flash now our extra uh, uh, statement, uh, Arnold? No? Show the last slide, please. The last slide. There. Braving it and making it in livestock agribis. So uh, with what we heard, I think there's no reason why uh, investors uh, would not dare and uh, succeed investing in livestock agribis. With that statement, I'd like to uh, uh, thank everybody. Thank Director Echage and my good friend, Danny, and Director Morales, and uh, wish everybody a safe weekend. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Everyone, thank you. Thank you.